Welcome to this Sky News special programme live from Manchester Crown Court on the murder of Olivia Pratt Corbell. Today, a guilty verdict and some justice for her family. It's been more than seven months since Olivia was shot dead in her home in Liverpool at the age of just nine years old. Her death sent shockwaves through the local community and across the country. Olivia's mother, after hearing the verdict, left court clutching her daughter's teddy bear. The man convicted of Olivia's murder, a drug dealer, Thomas Cashman, is due to be sentenced on Monday. Well, there were gasps and tears from Olivia's family as Thomas Cashman was found guilty of murder, attempted murder, wounding with intent to do grievous bodily harm, and two charges of possession of firearms. Throughout the trial, which lasted more than three weeks, he had consistently denied being the gunman in the attack. The senior investigating officer described the situation as something unlike anything he'd encountered in his nearly 30 years of policing. This is my report on the murder that shocked the nation. In the dark on a Liverpool street, these were the moments that were to lead to tragedy. Thomas Cashman, marked by police with a blue dot, pursuing his intended victim, a man called Joseph Nee, marked here in red. The gunfire recorded on a security camera and shown to the jury. It was the next shot that was to prove fatal to a young girl. Olivia Pratt Corbell was just nine years old, a unique, chatty, nosy little girl, her family said, who loved life and all it had to offer. It was a life cut short by a gunman who'd gone out to kill. A jury deciding that that gunman was Cashman, whose ruthless pursuit took the shooting inside Olivia's home. What Olivia's mother, Cheryl, made of the verdict was clear to see as she left court. She and her family sat through the trial for them and for police, a moment of relief. The circumstances around it were just abhorrent. And she was cowering behind her mum because she was scared in her own home. You always feel as though you're safe in your own house. I think, as an investigation team, we could not believe that the gunman would continue to shoot into the house. I don't think we've ever seen anything like that before. The community had been disgusted by his actions. They've been in fear of him for a long, long time. He will know himself and had to carry that responsibility. Olivia's mum, Cheryl, was injured by the bullet that killed her daughter. The jury heard her description of that night, the moment she knew Olivia, in her words, was gone. This was that intended target that night, convicted burglar knee. Police say it was a petty dispute. You're under arrest for on suspicion of murder. Cashman had denied being the gunman. He said he was going about his business as a high-level cannabis dealer that night. But the trial heard from a witness who said he'd gone to her home after the shooting looking for a change of clothes and admitting having done Joey Knee. Police have commended her bravery in coming forward. At no time, police say, has Cashman shown any remorse. He's a coward. He's despicable. He made great play in the, in the trial that he is a dad. And yet he's put Olivia's family through this trial. I hope he reflects every morning when he wakes up behind bars and every night when he goes to sleep about what he's put Olivia's family through. The guns used that night have still not been recovered. Police say this investigation continues even after a lengthy and complex prosecution. We're only a small wheel in the cog here of, you know, nothing will bring Olivia back. This is just for the family. Some sense of justice, the person who ruined their lives is now seeking you know, we've not got justice for them. Cashman was driven away from court but will be back there on Monday to be sentenced. Police say Olivia's death should not be in vain. A girl of wit and kindness, her family said, whose life was short but whose personality certainly wasn't. 
Liverpool, the Merseyside Police and Crime Commissioner Emily Spurrell joins me now from Liverpool. Good evening to you and thanks very much for joining us. I, I remember talking to you in the aftermath of this shooting on, on King's Heath Avenue. When you think back to that day and you think back to think of today and where we are, what do you think this moment means primarily for Liverpool? Firstly, I just want to offer, you know, my heart, my heart goes out to uh, Cheryl and all of Olivia's family and loved ones. I can't imagine what they will have been through over the last few weeks. Obviously, nothing is going to bring back their beautiful, chatty little girl. Um, but I do hope this does offer some comfort to them that uh, Cashman is now going to be facing a life sentence and will be off the streets of Merseyside. And for the city, obviously people there have been following this trial. What do you think this, this means to, to, the, to the community and the, and, the, and the wider city as well? There is absolutely uh, no room for weapons or, or, or guns in our city. And we heard that message very loud and clear last summer after the awful incident. I'm incredibly grateful to the community, those who particularly came forward, who supported the family, but who shared information, who contacted the police, who went through Crime Stoppers. I think it's testament to them and their hard work and their, and their bravery that we've been able to get the right verdict here at court today. And I think everybody across Liverpool and the whole of Merseyside is pleased that we've got the, the, the result today. I was going to ask you that. It was clear, looking at the, the, the senior members of the investigating team this week, the, the strain of, of what they've had to do over the last uh, seven months and a, a complex, a big investigation in the, in the public eye uh, as well. How do you think they'll be feeling about the, the job they have done in, in persuading the jury, in putting that case to the jury that, was, that proved successful in, the, in, in securing this conviction? I'm incredibly grateful to the work of our police officers and staff as well as the CPS. They have worked tirelessly to get this result today but they absolutely couldn't have done it without that support from the community, those people who have come forward uh, and given that information. And I want to reassure the public that the police will act on this information whenever something like this happens. They take this seriously. They want to get the right outcome. And ultimately today, they've been able to secure that justice. So I'm very proud and very grateful for the hard work they've done to get justice for Olivia's family today. The, the police have said, the senior investigating officer has said that the, of clearly the guns that were used on that night are still out there. They've appealed to uh, whoever is holding those guns or knows where, where they are uh, to come forward. Um, that shows, I guess, that there is still a lot of work to be done. What's your message to, to, the, to the people of Liverpool on, on that front of, of what still needs to be done? Merseyside Police is relentless in its uh, pursuit of tackling serious and organised crime. We have seen the lowest firearms discharges in recent years, but clearly, as you say, there is still more work to be done. Merseyside Police are regularly regarded as one of the best for tackling this issue, particularly around firearms. They want to understand where those guns are being held. They want to know what types of weapons are out there. And again, it comes back to that brilliant support that we get from the community. They absolutely can't do this without that support. Uh, they will continue that work and we will invest in our communities, but we need everybody to come forward and share any information, either anonymously through Crime Stoppers or directly to the police, and the police will act on it. There was a lot of talk at the time, wasn't there, about this, this wall of silence, w whether it existed or not, uh, and the police have said that it didn't, it didn't exist. It, 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 it wasn't a factor in this case that people were coming up to police cordons and, and giving information that they were, were handing over CCTV, much of which we saw uh, during the course of this, of this trial. The, the community's part in this um, investigation and this conviction is, is pretty clear, isn't it? It absolutely is. And I think we saw in the outcry that, that we saw last summer how much the whole community across Liverpool, across Merseyside, was, was shocked by this. People wanted to get justice for Olivia and for her family. And I think that just shows in terms of the quality, the numbers of people who came forward, those individuals who bravely uh, you know, gave evidence throughout the court trial. Absolutely, we could not have secured this verdict today without them. And I'm incredibly grateful for all the support they've offered. The police have talked about the need to get guns off the streets, clearly. Cashman himself uh, said he was a, a high-level cannabis dealer. The, the police said that people had lived in fear of him uh, for some time. Those issues of, of dealing with, with drugs and guns, how do you reassure the public that 
they are being dealt with, that the police um, are, are able to solve those problems. Because, of course, we still see guns being used on the streets, not just in Liverpool, of course. How do you persuade people that, that things will improve? Well, as I say, Merseyside Police is regarded as one of the best in the country for tackling serious and organised crime, particularly that focus on firearms. We've seen the lowest numbers um, in almost 20 years, so I think we are seeing progress being made. One of the initiatives that we managed to, to develop after the incident last summer, we secured additional funding, was to further roll out our Clear Hold Build programme. This is very much going in and clearing out those individuals who would seek to cause that harm and misery within our communities, get rid of them. But then importantly, we go back into those communities and we work together with them, with our partners, and we support them to build that resilience. So actually those individuals that we've cleared out, they can't come back in, they can't take hold. We support our young people to go on a better a path and it's all about how we can create that long lasting change so these gangs cannot take hold of communities again. Emily Spurrell, the Police and Crime Commissioner for Merseyside, thanks very much for joining us uh, there from um, Liverpool this evening. Well, Sky News has been analysing the known movements of uh, Thomas Cashman as set out uh, in court by the prosecution on the day that Olivia died. Making multiple journeys throughout the day, Thomas Cashman returned to his house for eight minutes before leaving again at 8.30 p.m. He drove around the local area before parking his car and walking to Finch Lane, where he waited for more than 30 minutes for Joseph Knee. Joseph Knee was at an address on Finch Lane watching a football match with a friend, which finished at 9.52. Shortly afterwards, Knee left the house with his friend and turned on to Kings Heath Avenue. CCTV footage captured Joseph Knee being pursued by Thomas Cashman at 9.59. Shots were fired. Joseph Knee then ran into the driveway of the Corbell house. Thomas Cashman fired into the house. This was the moment Olivia Pratt Corbell was shot. Thomas Cashman fled the scene, running through back gardens. Joseph Knee was picked up by a car. Without the story of that day in August, well, Ian Byrne is the MP for West Derby, where Olivia lived. He's told Sky News that more funding does need to be dedicated to stopping young people from entering a life of crime. I think her path Olivia's legacy hopefully will be, you know, changing uh, how we ensure that the youth have got an opportunity through youth funding, you know, how Olivia, what happened uh, isn't in vain, you know, that we look at the societal issues which have led to the tragic death of Olivia, you know, and how she was taken away from her family, how she was put in these, how the circumstances arose in which she lost her life. You know, there's so many, so many questions uh, that we need answers to, both within our own communities, but also from a national point of view as well. So, you know, for me, hopefully I'll be, I'll be raising them questions, I'll be looking for answers, and it's about rebuilding the community, most importantly, Olivia, the mum, uh, Olivia's family, uh, how they come together. You know, hopefully this is a, a, the first part of, you know, you know, of that process. Well, Ian Byrne, uh, MP there. Well, the acting Bishop of Liverpool, Beverly Mason, uh, joins us now uh, live from, from Liverpool. And good evening to you, and thank you very much for, for taking time to talk to us this evening. evening. I wonder what you make of, of the reaction in the city uh, to, to what's happened here in Manchester today and, and what's been the end of a, a very long process for the people of the city and, of course, the, for, for Olivia's family. It's felt like a very long process, hasn't it? And in real terms, it hasn't been that long. Uh, the police um, have done an extraordinary job. People in the community have done an extra extraordinary job. There's people who have uh, stepped up and stepped out, spoken up, spoken out, uh, and uh, some at enormous cost to themselves. So I think the city has a profound sense of gratitude to, to all of those people who have b uh, brought uh, Thomas Cashman to, um, to, to justice. There was a lot of talk in, in August about the, the, the needs of the community and how it was being blighted by these issues of gang violence and, and increasingly gun violence and, and drugs as well. What do you sense that the mood is now? Are, are people seeing change? Do they feel that that, that watershed that, that was talked about so much 
um, has, has arrived that things are changing. It, there was a horrible spate of gun crime, wasn't there? One after the other, uh, and and it left us reeling. Um, and uh, and there was a, an outcry. You know, people were saying, "This is not our city." Liverpool is a fantastic city. It's vibrant. It's colourful. It's welcoming. It's full of hospitality. Uh, and. Um, it's not our city, you know, and we don't we don't want it. We have no truck with this kind of um, this kind of uh, uh, violence and behaviour. It's, uh, it's, it's shocking, uh, and so I, I think we we stand with one voice behind um, Cheryl and the family, um, and saying, you know, that uh, th this just is not acceptable. This is not our city. What are your thoughts about someone like Cashman on a, on a night like tonight? Uh, he faces, of course, a life sentence uh, in prison. What do you feel about, about him tonight? Uh, tonight I feel like justice, uh, justice, justice has happened. Uh, uh, the, you know, there's, there's a verdict. Um, the verdict uh, is sound. It was unanimous. Uh, and um, and it, it seems right and proper. Uh, and I, I think um, that without justice, there can never truly be peace. I wonder, I don't believe there can be, be, be peace without justice. Uh, and so my hope and prayer now is for, for Cheryl and the family um, that they will, they will start piecing together the shards of their broken hearts uh, and, and start to live. Uh, all of this has been hanging over them for what must have felt like an eternity. Uh, and, um, you know, there must be so many questions. Uh, and, uh, and they've had to forensically relive everything. Um, so I hope that uh, this will give them, the verdict will give them some sense of, of closure, at least on, on this, uh, this, this horrible uh, episode in their life, uh, and enable them to start uh, living their lives uh, in the light and blessing and joy uh, of, of all that Olivia has brought to them. I'm sure the whole country would agree with you. We just heard a little while ago from Ian Byrne, the MP for West Derby, uh, talking about the need to try to turn young people away from, from that gang culture that, that we've heard a lot about in the trial and the, and the life that Cashman uh, led. What do you think the answer is to that? How, how, how do you turn away young people who, who might see that as a, uh, a glamorous, exciting way of life? Well, certainly numbers seem to be attracted to that way of life. What's the answer to that question? We have to tell a different story and we have to invest in our young people. Uh, if we don't, others will. Uh, that, that's the bottom line, isn't it? Uh, and so we need to, to look at how we are investing, uh, it, uh, it, investing in our young people. Um, the Clear Hold Bold um, project uh, and work that's being done around that is absolutely crucial. Uh, I'm very proud of the work done by our churches and being done by our churches, uh, connecting with schools, counsellors, um, uh, and, 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 and uh, uh, people involved in the community to tell that different story and involved uh, in re regenerating effectively. Uh, this is crucial work. There needs to be more investment in this type of work. People talk a lot about Rhys Jones and the fact that Olivia died 15 years to the day after Rhys Jones died as a result of, of gun violence. That was said to be a watershed. Just finally, do you, do you hope this is a, a watershed for, for Liverpool and these, the, these issues that um, have, have, have arisen in, in quite a short space of time? Yeah, I, I pray that we never forget Olivia. I pray that the city never uh, regret, uh, never, never forgets Olivia, just as it hasn't forgotten, um, forgotten all these people, these young people whose lives have been snaffled up from them uh, and snaffled up from the, the world. It's, it's uh, an outrage. It's a, a blot against humanity. We cannot forget. Uh, but in the remembering, uh, we need to, um, I believe, just, just hold the light um, we can live a better life, we can create a better world, but it requires uh, our commitment. Uh, so my hope and prayer for this city, as it is uh, for, for this nation, is that um, uh, rather than being formed by uh, and having fear instilled in us by the terrible things that happen, actually they become immense motivators to work for a, a bigger, better, brighter world. 
Beverly Mason, the acting Bishop of Liverpool, thank you very much for your time uh, with us uh, this evening live there in, uh, in Liverpool as the city reflects on this uh, verdict uh, here at Manchester Crown Court uh, today. Well, the chair of Merseyside's police and crime panel, Barbara Murray, says the community was extremely cooperative with the police in carrying out this investigation. I'm really proud of this community. There was nothing like a wall of silence. Um, I personally heard that name within 48 hours from several different sources. Um, our, people, our, our people who live here wanted justice and they came forward and they spoke to the police and the police are quite right to give them uh, recognition for what they did because they were very brave. We're talking about people who are not um, not like us, if you like. They're violent, they use guns. And so despite the fear people might have had, they did give that intelligence to the police and I'm very proud of them. Barbara Murray there from the, uh, the Merseyside uh, Police and Crime Panel. Well, our crime correspondent, Martin Brunt, joins me now, live now from uh, Liverpool. And Martin, we, we saw the relief for the family, we, we saw the relief for the police, but for the city as well, uh, this is a, a significant moment. Yes, it, indeed. I think we saw the relief on the face of um, Cheryl, uh, Livia's mother, as she left court. Um, you know, almost triumphant, um, but set against, of course, the awful tragedy uh, of her daughter's death. Um, <clears throat> And I'm sure that's widely reflected uh, in, uh, in the city tonight because, of course, you know, there is relief because this wasn't the strongest prosecution case. Uh, the prosecution didn't suggest a, a firm motive. They didn't get any forensic evidence. They didn't find the weapons. Um, but what they did do was put together a, a compelling case of circumstantial evidence, certainly enough to convince the jury. Now... A few days ago, as we waited for the jury to deliver its verdict, I uh, went around uh, part of Liverpool, the area where Olivia uh, was murdered, um, with a reformed gangster. And one of the things we talked about was the conflict that people face on occasions like this, where outrage and, uh, and horror and the, f the need for justice uh, is always balanced uh, against loyalty and fear of being called uh, a grass and informing on the police. How do you wrestle with that issue of giving information to the police? This is the report I did. We've got into firearms and guns at 21 um, and then just escalated those from there. Sicarius McGrath was a major Liverpool gangster. He once roamed these streets where guns are used to enforce drug empires. I was mixing in those circles, I was mixing in those situations, so I'm a bit of a hypocrite to stand here now and say, you know, they're absolute scum, which they are, but I was, one, I was once that same scumbag. And you put guns on the streets, by your own admission, I think? Yeah, in, in massive volumes. When Olivia was shot, the community was in conflict, outrage balanced against loyalty and fear of being called a grass. Obviously, people are going to be reluctant, and I think, depending on who commits the murder, if, if they're established, Gang members, then people are going to be more reluctant. Police struggled to get the evidence they needed for Olivia's murder. Everyone says there's a cold, no grass, no, no this, no that. If it benefits criminals, they, they, will, they will grass each other up. It's what benefits them. They're not just going to do it for charity. But for the members of the public who witness a big crime, how difficult is it for them, do you think, to give information? It's going to be overwhelming, it's going to be scary, and, and they're not really going to want to get involved. But when it's a child, uh, I, I, I think the real big goes out the window. But they will worry, won't they, about their own safety afterwards, if people they're find to, out... They're, they're going to, but that's for, that's for the police. They're going to worry, but that's for the police to, to reassure them that they're going to protect them and, and ensure their safety. Police heard from one key witness early on, but got no direct evidence. No one who could identify the gunman. No forensics, no weapon. A reward of £50,000 wasn't doing the trick. It was boosted with another 100,000 from an anonymous donor, a businessman from Merseyside. The charity topped it up to a record £200,000. When I heard there was a reluctance for people to come forward and testify, that's what really got my back up. I thought, well, I'm going to do something about this. It was an amount that would make people sit up and take notice. 
The bottom line is that this was horrific, the murder of a young girl. It doesn't come much worse than that. 16 years ago, a young boy, Rhys Jones, was shot dead only a few miles from here. I reported on it. Sicarius was in prison, but we both heard the loud calls for change. They always say that whenever there's a young person stabbed or shot, um, they say enough is enough and they're going to take a stand, but communities never do. It's just all words. A couple of days or a couple of weeks later, they just go back to doing what they were doing and forget about it. It's only the families that are left suffering. Last August, Olivia's death was one of three gun murders in a week. There have been two more in the city since. Martin Brunt, Sky News in Liverpool. Well, I'm joined now by Mandy Jamieson, whose 16-year-old son, Danny, was killed in Liverpool in 2018. And, Mandy, thanks for, for talking to us uh, tonight. I'm sure we can all only imagine what you must feel when you hear stories like this. And I know you've met Cheryl Corbell. Um, what are your feelings uh, tonight for her and her family? I'm just so glad that she got the outcome that she wanted. Um, I'm glad that it's over for her. It's not going to bring the baby back obviously, um, but I'm just glad it's over. I mean, she should never have been put through that trial. I think it's awful that victim families have to go through all this. There's no consideration for how all this has affected us. I'd like to actually see how he would have acted if it was one of his children that got murdered. You know, maybe it'd be a different thing. And the carry on office family outside that court, they should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. How dare they carry on like that? She was a baby. She was only nine years of age. It's like Ava. Ava was only 12. This is just appalling. They were carrying on off them. I'm just glad that Cheryl's got a little bit of peace. I know it's not going to be over. And again, she'll wake up tomorrow and Olivia's still going to be gone. But at least she's got some kind of justice from this. Um, it's just so sad. As I say, people don't realise it's hard work being a grieving mother. Every day, it's exactly the same. Same pain. Every day you wake up and you realise that your child's no longer here anymore. And people just don't get it, you know. And the fact that they've put her through 18 days of having to relive that every single day is just wrong. And I'm just glad. And I hope that the judge never lets this man out. And again, I think his family needs to hang their heads in shame instead of carrying on like that outside of the court. It's awful. It really is. Yeah. I know you've... You, I know you've said that it, being a grieving mother is like living a life sentence. What, what yeah. do you hope? The police have said it, that, that she, uh, she cannot, that Olivia cannot have died in vain. What do you think would need to change to, to make that come true, to really to make sure that she didn't die in vain? We need to get rid of this grass and mentality in Liverpool. It's absolutely awful. When children are losing their lives and people don't talk, I just think it's horrendous. I mean, again, I'd like to see how they would deal with it themselves if it happened to one of their children. I think that parents need to start standing up to their children. Um, you see, the kids nowadays seem to be getting away with so much, which is resulting, but again, the way Cashman has carried on because he's got away with it all his life. Um, I just don't understand the justice system sometimes. I mean, I know the police wear cards, and without the police, we'd have absolute chaos. We need to bring more early interventions, I think, into Liverpool where we're showing people, which is what we're trying to do now, is that, you know, you can't carry on like this. There's a different path for you to take. Um, we just don't seem to be getting no support with it, though, to be honest. I mean, I can shout about this all day, but nothing ever changes. Nothing hasn't. Even the four years since Daniel was taken, nothing has changed. And, like, even with Ava... I mean, we're still in the same situation we are, and the kids are going younger and younger. I mean, Daniel was 16, Ava was 12, baby Olivia was only nine. What are we going to do, go lower than that now? You all want to grow up and stop terrorising people. If you can't use your fists, don't fight. Don't be picking up guns or weapons or anything like that. It's just wrong. We're having to, you know, dealing with it the old-fashioned way instead of picking weapons up. People don't understand the damage that it does to us, you know, honestly, they don't. They just think, oh, yeah, just a kid's being killed. They don't see the aftermath of it. The ripple effect where it, it damages families. It's just hard. It really is, you know. It is like living a life sentence for us. I know he's gone to jail now, but 
Cheryl has got to re- do this every single day for the rest of her life because this pain doesn't go away. It stays with you forever. Mandy Jameson, um, we appreciate your thoughts on what's a difficult day, I'm sure, for you and clearly for, for Olivia's family as well. But thank you for your uh, time with us uh, live from uh, Liverpool there. Well, thank it is a story that has shocked the nation. A nine-year-old girl killed in her own home as she hid behind uh, her mother. For the family, some justice today as Thomas Cashman was found guilty of her murder. He'll be sentenced on Monday.